Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. Stats Canada has released a whole bunch of data about fertility rates. The fertility rate fell to one of its lowest levels in decades in 2020. The pandemic may have been part of that, but recent survey data shows economics are part of it too. 38% of young adults aged 20 to 29 do not think they could afford to have a child in the next three years. There are also people who are consciously choosing to be child-free. These stats caught Jenny Bovard's attention. Jenny is the host of the Low Vision Moments podcast. Hey, good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Dave. How are you? I'm great, Jenny. Thank you for bringing this topic to the table today. Let's start with the data itself. What do you find striking about some of this data? Well, first off, I have to say I feel seen and heard. And really what the data says to me is that priorities are shifting for people in that age range where historically they would be expected to start having children and starting a family in the sense of having children. So another recent study jumped out at me and that one showed that one third of people surveyed said they didn't want to have children ever. So mm. one in three people, I think that's worrisome for some folks on some level when they read that. But again, I feel like this is an important conversation to have. So I'm so glad that we're talking about it today. When we think about our current economic and cultural climate, Canadians are doing this real serious cost benefit pro con analysis around this massive life choice. It's no longer just assumed that by a certain age, you're going to do certain things and it, that includes having children of your own. Yeah, it, it, it's it's so interesting when you put all those data points together because when you think about the economics of the equation, it it like it really matters. And for those sixty six percent of people who do want to have kids, and perhaps economics are stopping them, the ability to even own an apartment or a house that's big enough to have kids in, like that that is a jarring thing. But I think that the 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 other thing that you've identified there, the notion of being child free, the choices that people are able and willing to make, strike me as interesting too. And I, and I think that's a conversation worth having between you and I this morning. And we can lay our cards on the table. Where do you land on the notion of being child free? Well, first, I'm glad that it's you and I and the people enjoying the show having this conversation and asking these questions as opposed to the Uber driver who insists on knowing who's going to take care of me when I'm older. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, it, it is very uncomfortable at times. But I want to say also that parenting can certainly be a beautiful thing, right? I want to acknowledge that if that's what you choose. But you really said something important to me, and that's the the choice, right? I love kids. I love spending time with my nephews and my niece. I work with kids in my job as a mentor. Dave, I am a stellar babysitter. Hire me. <laughs> I am so much fun and so responsible. But my family unit consists of my husband and I, our senior cat, and our three-year-old lab shepherd mixed dog. It's just us. We have made a conscious decision to be child free we are content with that decision that we made long ago there are a lot of reasons why neither of us is interested in having children we we can't imagine our lives with all of those added responsibilities budgeting the time budgeting the money the thought of childbirth itself that is still a risky process mm. and i don't really know how people do it i i give props to people who are parents but I have no idea. I have no desire to figure out what it's like for myself. And and I just want to say that that's okay too. Parenthood is beautiful, but child free can be beautiful too. You know, Jenny. But twenty years ago, I I thought I was going to be someone who was going to want to have kids. And as time has gone on, I'm I'm increasingly becoming someone who is probably not going to have kids and is probably making that choice. I do waver from time to time. It's part of the privilege of being a man. I can wait a little bit longer to, to actually make a finalized choice on this front. I have friends who are in their 50s who only started having kids in their 50s. So I, yeah. I, I, know, I, know, that, um, I know that I still have time, but, but I'm also getting closer to that point where I, I don't think that, that being a parent is going to be for me. And if I was going to be vulnerable, and lay this on the table, I think my disability does have something to do with it. Um, I know this may upset some people who 
think that disability should only be ever talked about positively, but there are a couple of realities um, to my situation, which is I can't drive. And not being able to drive uh, when you have a child can put a lot of burden on your partner, or it just might be something that is very difficult for you to do. And listen, there are plenty of parents who've raised their kids without being able to drive, but it, it, it becomes a matter of complexity, and it's something that I think about. I also think about the fact that I'm legally blind. Um, it's hard for me to, to keep track. Like, if I brought my kid to a park or a bigger space, I might have trouble actually keeping track of my kid, and, and I think about that. And then there's also just the reality of albinism, right? What, what the disability that you and I share is a condition that's genetic, and I would be passing on my genetics and I'd be passing on if not albinism explicitly because there's there's some genetic machinations as to whether or not my child would have albinism but I would be passing that gene forward now this is me being vulnerable I'm not trying to disability shame I'm just trying to talk about it in an honest way and where it lands for me as an individual how about you how, how, do, how much does this disability play into your feeling about being child free I feel very much the same way around the ability to drive. I got a dog a few years ago. And I, I, again, I'm not trying to make light of this. Uh, it's it's not comparable, really, having a dog and having a child. But for me, getting a dog further solidified the, some of those things for me. I often worry that my dog is missing out on experiences because I don't drive. Like, putting a child into the mix, trying to think of getting all of my daily tasks done with a child on public transportation, that is overwhelming to me. And to, to go back to the positive side of things, I think that, yes, obviously people with all types of disabilities are out here being incredible parents. Oh, I for sure. For time. sure. Yeah. And, and having the lived experience as someone with a disability, with albinism, maybe that is a benefit you know, having that lived experience that we can pass down if our child also has a disability, but it does add complexity and it does affect our daily lives and life is difficult anyway. There are also so many bigger picture things, Dave, that I consider because I think when we have these conversations, some people might look at us as selfish or um, I, that's a strong word, but if we look at the housing crisis and climate change, these are bigger picture things that everyone, um, not everyone, but that a lot of people are considering these days mm. when they think about having children now. I, I, I think I think you hit the nail on the head right there too, right? That housing crisis and climate change is not just the person individually looking inward and saying, can I do this? It begs the question of, should I do this? Should I have kids? That's right. There are so many things to consider. It's incredibly, it's, it's so complex. And I just, again, the expectation that by a certain age, you're going to have a child. I think that we're, we're shifting and priorities are shifting. And I think that that can be a good thing. Do you ever waver? Uh, again, Jenny, I'll, I'll acknowledge my privilege again here that that I have I have time to waver if I want to. I was at one of my friend's um, kid's birthday parties a couple weeks ago, and it was a lot of people that I went to CJEP and university with, and I, I just saw them having like these loving families and these loving, touching moments, and they're building community together. And and you know, in that moment, I'm thinking to myself, you know, like maybe maybe I want to be more than just Uncle Dave, like in this moment. Um, so so I I feel maybe a little bit of that peer pressure, and then of course like the pure Darwinianism of it all, like our purpose in life, since we are microbial bacteria in the sea, was to reproduce, and through plagues and wars and migration and storms and like for for billions of years, genetic hey, material is 2023. Been... <laughs> it's almost 2024. Or <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But but you know, like I, I I do I think about these things and like I do occasionally waver. And that was my long preamble of asking you a pretty closed-ended question. Do you ever waver on your decision? Short answer is no, I don't. I is would my husband and I produce adorable offspring? Probably. 100 percent Right? Would they be strong-headed? Would they probably have asthma? Also very likely. But I, unlike you, I don't have those moments of, yes, the, there's a lovely family over there having, um, uh, you know, having a moment, building memories. I don't, I don't have those feelings of envy in those moments. I do have, 
you know, I do have, I am really solid in my decision and I too have been fortunate enough to have access to resources and, and information that have helped me, uh, it, that have made it possible for me to be child-free at the age of 37. So I want to acknowledge that I have some privilege there as well. I have access to certain things, but I take this really, I take this decision very seriously. Um, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to be an adoptee. I was adopted. And in the first month of my life, I spent that first month waiting in a hospital for someone to take responsibility for me. Luckily, I have an incredible family. So I just, I know that for sure that parenting can be very difficult. It can be all consuming and it it simply isn't for everyone. So I, I, I'd like to contribute to the Oprah's of the world in normalizing the child-free option. And sure, there's, you know, you want to carry on your name. Some people really have that within them that they want to carry on their name, but I'm more focused on my career and uh, uh, making fun a priority in my life. Mm. Sure, you can do those things as a parent, but I think I'm looking to leave a legacy, a little crumb of a legacy as opposed to uh as opposed to a last name for example or even my genes nobody nobody wants my genes i don't have good genes. <laughs> uh, only, only only stretchy fabric genes uh for me jenny <laughs> jenny the, i i so appreciate the vulnerability that you're showing this morning thank you for opening the door on this conversation and it's one that uh we can have again down the road as well thank you for this thank you dave i really appreciate the time to talk about this that's Jenny Bovard, the host of the Low Vision Moments podcast. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.